Back now with the roundtable, George Will is off, but we are joined by Peggy Noonan of the Wall Street Journal, Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Krugman of the New York Times, ABC's John Carl, and my favorite political hot couple, Mary Matlin and James <laughs> Carville. And, and, and Peggy, let me begin with you. I want to focus on the debate right now. You could not have been tougher on President Obama's performance in your column yesterday. Yeah, I, I thought uh, the president barely showed. I thought the New Yorker cover, the now famous New Yorker cover in which they had a, a candidate, Romney, at a podium looking at the empty chair where Mr. Obama would have been, uh, captured it all. I, I, I am very curious about what the heck happened. Was it a strategic mistake on the part of the Obama campaign to play it a certain way and it didn't work? Or were there other factors involved? To me, it is a mystery and one of those delicious things that will probably be answered in the big books about 2012. But yes, the president was bad and Romney was good. You want to jump right yeah, in here. <laughs> this is classic Obama. He really, really wants to be the president of national unity. He's always wanted to be the reconciliation candidate. And his instinct, always in confrontations, is to not to go for the jugular, but to go for the capillaries. He doesn't. And he did the same thing in 2008. People forget just how weak his campaign was mm -hmm. through August of 2008 when he just was refusing to make the obvious case against McCain. And then he toughened up, but also. In the debate, Sarah, he toughened up in 2008. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, but the trouble, because he, he, he needs to be, have, have his back against the wall. So, so, but this was classic. This was him. This was the real Obama who does not like. He really wants to be a, a president of, of the whole nation. And he, he somehow has a hard time wrapping his mind around the necessity to take a tougher line. Well, I said on CNN, I said, I didn't want to come to this conclusion, but sitting there watching, I had to come to it. He just didn't want to be there. So it wasn't he, strategy. I, I don't think it was. And, you know, we're going to know the next debate. I mean, he's obviously, he's either got to be different or he's going to, you know, it's going to be pretty bad. But I, it just looked like to me, he really didn't want to be there. His mind wasn't on it. He didn't want to engage. He just wanted to get through the 90 minutes. And I, I, I'm sure he's a very competitive guy. I hope, knock on wood, we're going to see a different President Obama uh, at Hofstra here. Yeah. How could a president feel that way? I don't want to be there during you know, a debate for the I, you know, presidency. You know, when Reagan got I, lost on the Pacific on the spot, Coast, highway, but I don't know. I don't, the answer is, but, but I don't know. You, but that was the impression I that I got. You, you had the President Obama going into that debate winning ahead in every single battleground state. I mean, he was, uh, looked to me like a guy that was running out the clock. Uh, he was ahead, didn't, obviously there was a, tr a strategic decision not to bring up Bain Capital, I, not to bring up the 47%. That's what I thought. They, well, they actually disagree. They say that he was prepared for all of that. Where I was more surprised, Mary, was you know, sort of picking up on the, on the points of blurring the differences that Paul is making. When Social Security came up, President Obama says he, well, Mitt Romney and I basically agree on Social Security. Can I state the obvious here, since we all have theories? The obvious is he didn't bring his game because he doesn't have a game. They have now blamed his performance on everything from strategic, he's a unifier, that's belied by his campaign, calling Mitt Romney everything from a liar to a tax cheat to a felon to a murderer to a dog abuser to a misogynist. This is one of the most negative campaigns in history. They blame Jim Lair. They blame Bob or Hey, there was the altitude. It's high. The there. altitude, okay? He has no game. The only way this, the truth of that this president likes to cite all the time that he has inherited the worst economy in history would be if he gets reelected. This is the worst recovery in the history of this country and his notion that it takes a long time to get out is belied also way, by history. That's actually not true. If you're just going to measure the recovery, it's way better than Bush's recovery. That's the actual growth since the bottom is, is, is a lot better. So that's, that, I mean, we're supposed to talk about that later, but this is, this is not true. You can argue with the unemployment rate is high because it was a hell of a recession, but this is not, in fact, Professor that's Dr. not the way to Krugman, do it. Professor can I ask you something about history? Has there ever been this not be true in history, that the deeper the, re the deeper the recession, the steeper and stronger the recovery. There is no such thing no, as a just... deep recession with a moderate recovery <laughs> Every financial crisis, financial, post-financial crisis economies look like this. We look like a post-financial crisis economy. We look exactly like a standard post-financial crisis recovery. Look at, look at all through, look at, look at Sweden in the 90s, look at Japan. Um, we're doing a little bit better than the average track on these things. So just, no, this is, this is, you can, I mean, I'm bitterly critical of Obama's performance in that debate, but this is not the way to criticize him. Why didn't he, though, bring up a lot of the points, for example, on the auto bailout, where there actually has been progress thanks to a decision the president made? You know, I don't know the answer to that. And I, if it's something here, I, but I think we're going to see a different President Obama in, in the next one. I, have, I, I don't know why he, he did that. You know, sometimes in life, you just have a bad night. 
Anybody that follows sports know that. Sometimes it's, it's the, 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 the yeah, most just, logical explanation is the real one. He just had a bad night. That's if you go back to 2008, he'd say things like, in the 90s, we had good job growth, but in recent years, we haven't. He could, somehow couldn't bring himself initially to say, under Clinton, we had great job growth, and under Bush, we had lousy. It's just, it's just, just him. His natural instinct is to, is to blur the partisan differences, but I think that will change in the next but debate. But you're definitely going to see a different Barack Obama in the next debate. I mean, they have signaled he is going to go right at Romney. This is going to be an entirely different I, th I think that's right. The question, one of the other questions coming out of this Peggy Noon, will we see a different kind of moderation? This was a brand new format where Jim Lehrer said he basically <coughs> wanted to get out of the way, and that he says, against a lot of critics, that he was effective in doing that. Do you agree? I completely agree. I thought Jim Lehrer was absolutely great, and it was a relief. I didn't even know in advance that this agreement had been made, that the way the moderator would moderate would be a little more laid back. This is what it was. Jim Lehrer is old school and a pro. He didn't think it was all about him. He didn't think it was about getting the camera on him. He didn't think it was about him being the anchor with the whip. Do you know what I mean? He would ask a question, and he would let these two guys either challenge each other or not, either lean back or lean forward, either take issue or not. He left it up to them. That was great because they are the ones running for president, the, not The critics him. were liberals because they know Obama cannot perform under those circumstances where he has to think on his feet, where he has to make sense of this recovery, which is the worst in <coughs> history, which continues to result in no job growth whatsoever. That's the reality people that's, are that's living. The, but, but, but can we, uh, I don't want us to get by without talking about the facts issue. Because we'll, Romney's... We'll definitely, we have plenty of time coming up. Yeah. <laughs> but the, 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 and I don't know whether to blame Lehrer or to blame the president, but it was kind of amazing because Romney was not only saying things that are not true, he was saying things that his own campaign had previously said were true. The one that got me was not the stuff about taxes, but the thing about covering people with pre-existing conditions, which his plan does not, which he has said that before and his campaign has walked it back in the past. And there he was right again saying, well, my plan covers people with pre-existing conditions, which is displaying a kind of contempt... So you for think it's public. the moderator's job to call him on? No, I'm not President sure whose Obama's job it is, job. but it is, you know, but there's a contempt for, for the whole process. It's a contempt for us people, because he's thinking, he's thinking the news media will not cover me on this. As long as I say it forcefully, they'll say I won, which is more the way oh, I was going to I was going to say oh, the okay. press is against uh, Obama no, the now? the press just doesn't know how to handle flat-out oh. untruths. Look, they asked one time, Lee Trevino, a great golfer, was having trouble with, with putting, and they asked him if he thought he needed a new putter. And he famously said, no, it's not the Arab, it's the Indian. Okay, it's not Jim Lair. The, the President Obama was sitting right there. He could have, he could have confronted but, the, Governor Romney on any number of issues yeah, and drawn but, a distinction. Yes. But isn't I, our I, job at least partly to actually, never mind the, 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 the quality of the theatrical performance, right. but to ask about, you know, were there, were there untruths spoken in that debate? And there were a lot. That was the President's job. That. To be clear, I mean, President Obama also was loose with the no, facts they were, in they, the were, debate. they were minor I mean, fudges. Uh, it, minor. It, it wasn't corruptly. He said he had a $4 trillion dollar plan to cut the deficit. So it's about $3.2 trillion done right. He said health care premiums rising at the slowest rate in 50 years. No, it, it, those are minor compared with, with the things. And you know what? Let's dig into those when we come back. But we do have to take a quick break.